Some different types of transducers, mechanical transducers, linear arrays, curved linear arrays, some phased arrays. Not a lot of mechanical transducers out there. Some of these old Sonosite transducers actually mechanically rotated uh, the ultrasound transducer back and forth in them and sweeped it, sweeped it through that. Uh, the frame rate is somewhat limited by the motor speed in which it's rotating that, um, and I said Sonosite, I meant to say sight right, uh, transducers. Here are the linear array transducers. We use them a lot uh, for musculoskeletal, uh, multi-element uh, transducer array, crystals aligned in a straight row. They're act act uh, activated sequentially to form scan lines. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, activate some of these in groups to get some sort of steering to the beam if you want. Uh, and here's that scanning motion for that linear array. Again, operating, if you want, you can fire multiple in a way that they interfere constructively so you get them focusing at a particular depth if you want. When we see an ultrasound study done with the linear array, it's usually very obvious because the face plate is straight right across the front. And the one thing I wanted to point out to you in terms of the linear arrays is that our loss of resolution as a function of depth is less than it is for the uh, curve linear arrays where the ultrasound beams are diverging as they get further away from each other. Here they're parallel to each other. They do still tend to spread out to diverge a little bit right in terms of the ultrasound beam but not nearly to the extent on those curved arrays. So here's that curved ray. It's another multi-element uh, transducer where they're arranged in an arc instead, typically a little bit lower in frequency. And again, we can usually tell that we're using one of those transducers in that we see this curved surface at the uh, top of the image where we're looking at the, the object. And here's that linear phased array. Now we've got this two-dimensional array of piezoelectric uh, crystals that we can really fire in very unique combinations to really steer the beam in a lot of different directions. So it allows us to have a transducer with a really small footprint, which is great for kind of seeing between the ribs, those kind of things, and still being able to sweep the ultrasound uh, beam out at uh, different uh, angles. Remember, these lines really diverge with depth, and therefore we don't get that density, uh, uniform line density, and our spatial resolution drops off uh, quite a bit in that lateral uh, direction as that occurs. And usually we can recognize them because you'll notice at the top of the image you have this really small footprint from which the ultrasound image appears to be arising. And like I mentioned, these really utilize that constructive and destructive interference we talked about, timing the pulses on the different piezoelectric uh, crystals and the 2D footprint to steer the beam into the different directions we want it to head. Just uh, briefly talking a little bit about Doppler, right? Uh, moving objects uh, result in change of frequency from the ultrasound source. We're all familiar with kind of the Doppler effect. And we know what the, how that change in frequency relates uh, to the velocity of the object that's either coming towards us or moving away from us by that simple equation there. If the moving object's at an angle theta with respect to the transducer, then the frequency shift, <coughs> frequency shift gets multiplied by this cosine theta uh, term here. And the importance of that is there's no shift. No shift ends up detected when the transducer is at right angles with respect to the direction of flow. So if we want to get good Doppler estimations of flow, we really have to make sure that we're away from this 90 degree angle in, in, in doing that. All right, so here's our transducer sampling the flow in that blood vessel there. In pulsed wave Doppler, the transducer alternates between the trans transmission and reception, right? Doppler information sampled from only a small sample volume. We typically define that as some subregion on the image. And it's presented, overlaid right on top of uh, our grayscale uh, image. Um, I'm, so I'm sorry, I'm, I'm actually, that's in color Doppler. We get some really good resolution in that sampling volume. We get the an analysis of multiple vessels at different depths when we do that. It's looking along that single line. And the disadvantage is that susceptibility to uh, aliasing. In color Doppler, we're now going to show the direction of flow relative transducer 
based on average velocity. So red flowing towards the transducer, blue away from it. It allows us, we look at little, some little subregion in time inside the grayscale image typically. It allows us to quickly identify normal, abnormal flow, whether it's towards the transducer or away from it. Uh, visualization of the small, some small vessels is improved uh, ver versus um, pulse wave Doppler. And uh, limitations, we've got lower spatial resolution than the grayscale. It's really not very sensitive to slow flow, also susceptible to artifact, and of course it takes a lot of time, so we get the lower temporal resolution. With, with power Doppler, um, we get a good signal regardless of the direction of the flow, uh, and it's presented uh, as typically this kind of hot iron overlay of the, the B-mode image. And it's very sensitive to low flow, it's independent of the Doppler angle, so we ha higher gains possible and there's no aliasing there. But the limitation being, right, there's no direction uh, or velocity information obtained from that. Very sensitive to transducer patient motion, and again we've got that low uh, temporal motion, right? That aliasing occurs when the Doppler shift frequency is higher than the Nyquist frequency limit, right? Um, so we're not sampling fast enough to see the velocity of that flow. And, and the appearance is always fairly straightforward where the top portion of part of this pulse is actually wrapped around to the bo bottom aspect uh, on the uh, image of, of the flow.